There's an old saw about if you don't have any concern with your history, and by extension your prehistory, you don't have a history or a prehistory. If you don't have one of those, you don't have a present, and if you don't have a present, you don't have a future. I've always been fascinated by what's underneath the ground. No one really considers what we walk over every day. What's beneath a parking lot, or a sidewalk, or even a building? We walk over history every day without even realizing it. It's just below your feet. As Pennsylvanians, we take a lot of pride in our history. We strive to preserve the symbols of our nation's beginnings, of our fights for freedom, and even of our everyday life. But are we missing something? Are we truly preserving all of Pennsylvania's past, or are we only preserving what's above the ground? We forget that a large portion of Pennsylvania's past still lies unseen, beneath the ground, waiting to be discovered. In order to preserve the unseen past, archaeology must be conducted. However, in Pennsylvania, there is a unique law interfering with archaeology called PA Act 70. Act 70 is a 1995 amendment to the Pennsylvania State History Code. It required that the Commonwealth be responsible for archaeology resulting from state permanent projects. It shifted the physical and financial burden of archaeological reconnaissance from the private sector to the government. In the 10 plus years since the passage of Act 70, no study has been conducted about the law's impact on archaeology. My name is Stephanie Bowen and I'm an archaeology student. With my friend and camerawoman, Sarah Griggs, I have decided to set out across Pennsylvania to find out what exactly Act 70 is and how it has impacted archaeology in the Commonwealth. Before we overwhelm you with legal jargon and bureaucratic acronyms, let's start with the basics. Our first stop in our investigation of Act 70 was Heberling Associates in Alexandria, Pennsylvania, to interview Dr. Paul Raber, a CRM archaeologist who has been active in archaeology for over 30 years. Dr. Raber introduced us to the term cultural resource management, or CRM. Cultural resource management uh, involves the protection of archaeological and historical resources um, in response to federal laws and regulations. The National Historic Preservation Act and there are enabling regulations. And they lay out a process whereby people who use federal money or who receive federal permits are required to consider the effects of their actions on archaeological sites, important historic sites. Cultural resource management is the primary form of archaeology in Pennsylvania. CRM archaeology is performed to comply with federal laws, such as the National Historic Preservation Act, and state laws, such as the State History Code and Act 70. Joe Baker, an archaeologist with PennDOT, explains Act 70. Act 70, as I recall it, was a, a 1995 amendment to the State History Code that changed the way that state permits and state permitted projects, which is a really fine, complicated point, accounted for their effects to archaeological sites specifically. Prior to Act 70, Pennsylvania's state preservation law was very similar to the federal law. Developers, construction companies, or state agencies applying for state permits who plan to destroy or impact cultural resources were required to do an archaeological evaluation. If excavation was necessary, the company would be required to pay to have the cultural resources excavated. Archaeologist Doug Mooney worked for such a firm. Uh, that was our bread and butter, really, uh, were projects that were being done because of you know, various state laws and uh, requiring archaeology to be done, whether it was sewers being put in or new housing developments. Uh, that's what we worked on primarily. The passage of Act 70 grew out of tensions between archaeologists and developers. However, the incident that prompted the proposal of the amendment originated in Wyoming County. The whole process started with a gravel mining permit along the Susquehanna River. There's a lot of uh, mining of gravel uh, in which they strip off the topsoil, obviously affecting any archaeological sites. Um, under the existing laws and, and regulations, they were required to do archaeological studies, surveys and, and evaluations of sites. There was a recorded archaeological site there. We responded to the permit request suggesting that an archaeological survey should be done there. And the mine operator hired a consulting firm and they went out and did some archaeology on the property and encountered, if I remember correctly, a, a Clemson Island um, archaeological site that would be a late woodland 
archaeological site, which are pretty common along the river. And the mine operator didn't like the response. You know, archaeology in, in this state, in most states, is handled almost exclusively by consultants. And, 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 pro, and the process of archaeology itself is, you know, a lot of it is done by hand. It is slow. It is time-consuming. And therefore, it is expensive. But the applicant for this mining permit complained to his local representative, George Hasse, and Representative Hasse pursued that, uh, eventually involving the Pennsylvania Home Builders Association in the process. And so there were a number of uh, very powerful parties with an interest in changing the existing laws and regulations. Archaeologists saw the efforts of Hasse and the Home Builders Association as a threat to Pennsylvania archaeology and the protection of cultural resources. We saw Act 70 for what it was, it was just an attempt to kill off archaeology in Pennsylvania. I mean, it was pretty blatant what the Home Builders Association was trying to accomplish. Um, the, the, everybody was upset about it because they knew exactly what it would mean for companies like the one I was working for at the time uh, and who required, you know, who relied on these projects being performed under state law. When that work was going to go away, we knew exactly what it meant for us. Dr. James Adivazio of Mercyhurst Archaeological Institute describes the problem as such. Shifting it away from the developer, shifting it away from the applicant, and putting the burden on the state to do, and then not funding the, the state's agencies like PHMC to do it. It's criminally negligent to do that in my take. Now, not only is the funding constrained, but the amount of time, if there were any funding, to do these projects is reduced essentially to 120 days. And believe me, it's not possible in many instances to do much in that span of time, no matter how sophisticated your field equipment and your capabilities are. And so we've almost guaranteed that as long as Act 70 is in effect, we will continue to lose vast chunks of Pennsylvania's long prehistory. The state held a hearing where both sides could present their arguments, but the event seemed more of a formality than a place for discussion. Both Dr. Paul Raber of Heberling Associates and Dr. Sarah Nicias, professor of anthropology at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, presented testimony. And I actually presented it, and it was very obvious to me that the deal was already done before we'd even gotten there. And this was just like a show, you know. Um, we received a sort of condescending and I, I thought insulting sort of response from, from Representative Hasse and, and his colleagues and it was just a wasted effort obviously. The big one that I remember was in Harrisburg with, with Paul Raber at that time. Um, and we didn't do a good job. We don't understand politics and we didn't, we didn't make our case very well. Uh, and there was a very emotional topsoil company owner who talked about not sleeping at night and some things like that that really sort of dramatized the whole thing and we looked like um, people going after our jobs or you know trying to protect our jobs or our income um, but as I, I said to you once already I am uh, I wasn't protecting my job I was protecting resources It's been over 10 years since Act 70 was passed. So what's happened? What has been the effect of Act 70 on Pennsylvania archaeology? Due to Act 70's lack of funding and lack of consideration for state permitted sites, archaeologists are concerned that history is being lost in favor of development. Some of the oldest archaeological sites in North America are here in this state. Some of the ones that have been occupied longest are here in this state. Some of the biggest and most complex sites east of the Mississippi are in this state and many of them are in areas being impacted by one or another construction activity either something as simple as a subdivision, a home building enterprise. We know that um, a large number of archaeological sites are probably being destroyed each year by development uh, and there's no consideration for those sites. 
We don't know the exact numbers, but we know that it's probably fairly large. What you need to do in order for that to really be successful is we need to do a much better job of involving the public, of letting them know what resources are out there that need protection, uh, and about letting them know how they can help. Uh, in the past, archaeologists have been just terrible about informing the public about what was being found or what it meant to people in a local community. Uh, they are getting much better with that now, uh, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, We've not been very good about explaining to the public why archaeology is important, why these resources are important as part of our past. I think we need to do a better job of that. Um, there have been some efforts recently to put out uh, popular type publications, you know, videos and so on that explain what's been done in, in Pennsylvania uh, in, in archaeology and, and why these sites are important, what we're learning from them, and uh, explaining why the public has an interest in protecting archaeological sites. With the negative impacts of Act 70 and a goal of increased communication with the public, what lies in the future for PA archaeology? Well, first of all, of course, there's a great future for Pennsylvania archaeology because there's a lot of really interesting archaeology here. So that's, you know, on one level, that's wonderful. If what you mean is what's the future of uh, doing CRM archaeology on state projects, then I, th I see that as fairly... Uh, bleak in some ways because we don't have funding and we don't have uh, an active attempt to change that. I, I think unchanged the spiral downward is only going to continue more and more and more the archaeological record is going to be lost. If the legislators decide to fund things like CAP at an appropriate level, we can do a lot to keep that from happening, but I doubt that's going to occur because we live in a time of serious economic stress and that hasn't been remediated in the last few years. It is better than it was, but it is still not good. And archaeology to many people remains a disposable luxury. So is Pennsylvania preserving its past? We think the answer is yes and no. We do value the past, but the unseen past remains in danger. Under Act 70, archaeology will continue in Pennsylvania, but not at the level it's been in the past. Sites will be lost, and history will be lost. We, as Pennsylvanians and as Americans, need to be aware of the fact that we are not the first people to walk across this land. For thousands of years, people have farmed this earth, drank from these streams, and created these unique societies, and we need to respect that. We are but a speck in the long progression of human existence. And if the present feels the need to wipe out the past, the future will suffer the consequences. All we ask of you is that you consider what's just below your feet. We, we like to say history keeps you from repeating mistakes. We know that's not true because we continuously do it. But when you don't even know what the history of those mistakes are, you almost ensure that you're going to continue to make them in the future. Mm -hmm.